Well, I guess it's been already discussed. You know, we're just seeing whether this works vice versa. Um, long term, if there is a value, then I guess my long term, what I'm interested in is if there is some sort of value in make it now. Should it, would it, if it happened every month or every mm. week, quite frequently, mm. so that people don't feel that they have to join now, you know, there's less liability of um, that they feel. How would that fit into the current cr creative process that or they already go through mm -hmm. anyway? You know, would that would that work if they are already in the process of creating a piece and this, you know, make it now happened? They just jump in for a weekend and you know, say, so we've got this, we've got this. Will some, will it take the original creative process to another level, mm -hmm. or would it just, you know? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. We also earlier today spoke about a possible long-term aim being to redesign the what the what this idea of data was, what the data is that arrives to the hackathon, to the process. And I think that's an extremely fertile ground to explore in terms of other disciplines entirely, not just interdisciplinary, mm -hmm. but other industries, you know, whether that's science or health or technology or education, whatever it is, but other kinds of knowledge and data that can be brought um, to the day or to the hackathon and looked at from the point of view of artists. I think that's an important long-term mission for me because I'm looking to up the status of artists as a whole in our society when we are hugely under threat right now mm -hmm. and that the importance of being able to problem solve in a creative manner possibly could save the planet mm -hmm. and then that as a really long really long term aim <laughs> is a good this is a good place to start capitalizing on what it is that artists can bring to other industries that's a really great meet a very kind of sexy meeting point right there and that's a strong long term aim for me anyway I think, yeah, I'd, I'd, so in my case, one of the interests here yeah, I'd like to know in the short term is um, the effectiveness of this kind of event as a prototyping exercise, mm -hmm. similarly to how traditional hackathons work, which is that in a very short space of time, 24, 48 hours, you can get a prototype that, you know, if, uh, that you can demo for some purpose to show that something can work, an idea is possible, or mm -hmm. an approach can work and even potentially to take that on further, whether it's to develop it further or to share it further. Mm. I think the long-term aims, um, I think we spoke about understanding what um, being data to a hackathon mirrors in this kind of environment. I think there's going to be a, um, a case of understanding and refining the model and mm -hmm. what that means. Mm. And certainly I think the, the modern rise of hackathons is connected to one, increasing availability of data and two, bringing people bringing that data out to be shared. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is a fundamental thing to understand. And also, in terms of the long term, um, in terms of, say, the hackathon circuit that gets set up, so that it is happening every week, and people feel that they can dip in when they want to perhaps learn a new skill or they want to share something. Um, what, how would that be realised if it's been used in other disciplines? Mm -hmm. In terms of how the format was developed, um, I think, sp just speaking from my perspective, it was a shift of gear from what our kind of uh, ordinary approach would be through things like the drift methodology would be to artist development and creative spaces and uh, tools for multidisciplinary innovation and so on with what the boundaries are of a hackathon and how the understanding of time, of collaboration, of results, of purpose shifted the way that that methodology could be applied and what was and wasn't so useful. And so in terms of developing um, the format I think it's about an understanding of, of, of the learning interests of people. We talked about that a bit earlier. So one of the 
pose of people for hackathons and for artist development is this idea that they will learn something new about how to make or about a tool or about an idea. And so having that element there, as well as the minimal structure that would allow just information to be disseminated, like the rotations. And then constantly developing it as we are having meetings in between to go, right, something's missing, let's try this, let's have a Q&A, let's have a pitching, let's have a competition, competition. let's uh, to try and bring in those driving forces of a normal hackathon or even mm. you know push it further mm. yeah i think it's a case of um, very much from for me it was a case of having uh, been attending hackathons um, personally and for my research and trying to, and writing up about them and the model that exists for them um was thinking about how to abstract that and how that would apply in a different space. Mm. So how could you take the ethos of the elements there and understand them in this context? You know? yeah, and, is, and is that part of defining a hackathon has to have a minimum of, of qualities or aspects to make it a hackathon? Like what is the minimum criteria? I think that's quite an interesting area to look at because earlier you said about how fluid the notion of a hackathon is and mm -hmm. it sort of depends on who's running it, depends on who's coming, it's all really free flow. Yes. Um, however, it's not because in order to call it that there must be some defining principles that are the, um, that underpin all of them. I think there's probably... The co uh, common denominators. I think there's probably either a minimalist uh, subset of things or mm. at least you'd have to have five of those things from this set <laughs> that would mean that you would call it a hackathon mm -hmm. um, I don't think to, I mean I've looked at what you might call the recommendations that you would have mm -hmm. for a hackathon but rather than the kind of the minimalist requirements but yeah I think it would be interesting to understand what are those very minimalist things that you would you know, take that you call it a hackathon Mm. How long does it have to be for mm. it to be a thon? Yes, the thon yeah. is already <laughs> dictating that there's temporal exactly. demands. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, um, so for example, I don't think, so just talking about the temporal aspect as an example, I've never heard of a hackathon that's less than 24 hours or yeah. some interpretation that's of That's right, hours. because that's the subversive nature of it as well, because today we don't do anything for 24 hours. There are no activities that, you know, maybe rave culture used to come close to it, but there's nothing that really lasts for 20 to 24 hours unless it's specifically for that, i.e., you know, durational art pieces, etc., that are about itself, they're about the temporality. So the, I, I'm assuming that the a-thon bit is a necessary, and the hack, <laughs> so that yeah. has to have those two, we can say that. Just by the so, word itself. Just by the word itself. So yeah. we're getting towards the answer. There's a hack as a marathon. Yeah, there's a hack and it lasts for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in terms of redefining hackathons for the future, that's still an interesting question about what's the minimum, yeah. what's yeah. the ethos. I think there's an ethos or manifesto that, that needs to sort of um, be looked at or explored. Well, someone told me yes. that hackathons, you just don't prepare beforehand. Right, you so just that get the there. Yeah. And it's all the, the You get there, you know, you, you figure out what you want to do, you figure yeah. out who you want to work with yeah. there and yeah, and that that, that's especially that's true for the participants, especially yeah. for the part, more so for the participants than perhaps people who are uh, organisers or the, mm -hmm. those who are sponsoring or bringing data. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But for mm -hmm. the participants, yeah, it's a case of, you know, show up. Turn up. Mm. Yeah. Requirement, minimum requirement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a requirement you show up. 